Hey y'all, welcome back to Dots and Beyond. My name is Beth. Today we are setting up my son Kenny's bullet journal with a fantastical fungi theme. It's mushrooms. We're doing mushrooms. I thought I would start this video off by showing you a little bit of our process. So Kenny told me he wanted mushrooms. He wanted them to have a little bit of fantasy. We have all of these different colors to pick from. He kind of wanted a burnt orange. So we just swatched everything. We tried some different colors. We tried some different ideas to see what would work. And then we came up with just using this basic orange color that is an Ohuhu marker. It is Ohuhu 152. And later on I do add Ohuhu 103 to it as well because we needed a little softer color. Now for all of my line work in this video I also went a little bit softer and these are sepia toned pigma microns so they are brown instead of black. For the font work I did use two complementary stencils one large and one smaller on the large one and then just sketched in some mushrooms to make it a little bit more interesting and then I decided just to trace them by hand. You're not even going to see me use a ruler in this video. I wanted everything to have that very organic feel. So for these mushroom illustrations, I wanted them to have the same repeating elements to keep everything cohesive. So first I'm drawing in my mushrooms and then to have a pop of contrast, I have these little sprouting leaves that I'm coloring in fully with the brown. The quote I'm using on this cover page is fungi makes worlds. And so we're also doing some worldly elements with some circles here and there and then adding in some magic with some sparkles. Now to fill in areas in and around my mushrooms, I'm going to go down to the smallest size of my pigma micron, the 0.01 or a 0.005, and do some little stems and bits and bobs underneath the mushrooms and the other foliage just to fill it out a whole lot. In addition to this gorgeous orange color and then the lighter color I'll introduce here in a little bit, I'm also going to use a brush pen that is a pigma micron brush pen and matches these sepia tones as well to color in some of the things dark brown and just give us this contrast like I'm doing on the word worlds. Going into this setup, I did have most things sketched out on the page, at least the mushrooms and the placement of things. Sometimes our little sprouting branches with the leaves and then the underbrush that I fill in. I did just completely off of where I felt things needed to go after I got the base elements on the page. And if you've been watching Kenny's videos for a little while, he loves a pop of gold. So we are filling in our last little magical elements with that gold color. And then here is that super, super light orange that I'm using on some of the other mushrooms and to give our letters a little bit of a drop shadow. It does not show up well on camera, but you can see it in person. And that is it. That is the beginning of our September fantastical fungi theme where we are creating a world of mushrooms. Moving on, we are going to set up Kenny's calendar and I'm keeping this the same as I have done for the last few videos of his, except like I said, I am not busting out that ruler. For the calendar lines, I'm using the thickest Pigma Micron. It's a 1.0 or a 10, as some people will call it, and also outlining our Monday through Sunday. We do use a Monday start, and then highlighting the top row of every line with that light orange so that we can fill in the dates with the darker orange. With our calendar structure in place, I am going to sketch in yet another S, E, and P for September, as well as some mushroom artwork. And the basic process here is the same. Same. We want to make sure and get our larger elements traced out first and then I'm adding in our leafy contrast doing the same thing in the top left corner to give us an artwork element up here as well. Larger mushrooms and leafy elements before coming back in with some color and all of the little fine underbrush that I add with a very fine point pen. I'm also using that fine point pen to do things like the fronds on the underside of a mushroom so it's a little neater and not as thick as the outline of the mushroom itself. And once we have all that line work in, we can treat this just like a coloring book and go in and look and see where do we need color? Where can we balance orange on one side, orange on the other? Where do I need a little bit of the lighter color? Where can we put some of the gold? All of those little questions that you would ask when you're just normally filling in a coloring book. We're just sticking with that orange palette and the brown and the gold. And then once we have most of the color on the page, I can come in and start adding back in some of those fantastical elements, which are going to be our circles just to give us a little bit of a spacey vibe, as well as some stars and some sparkles around the page. And I made sure that all of these sort of fantasy sparkle elements also included all three of our major colors. So we have the brown, 
we have the orange, and then we also have the gold. Always finishing off with the gold to keep it as minimal as possible. And that is going to be Kenny's calendar setup for September 2023 with our mushroom theme. I'm on a completely different day. This is a different cup of coffee. I've got an iced coffee next to me and we're ready to move on for the rest of the setup. For this September setup, we're going to give Kenny a page that he asked for, said he wanted to write down some routines. We decided we didn't really like the word routines. He preferred the word rhythms so that he can kind of put down what his routines would be like. So again, Kenny is a barista. Right now he's on an opening shift, so he's rolling out of bed and going to work at 5 a.m. or earlier, and there's really not such a thing as a morning routine for him. So we're going to go ahead and put in a post-work routine, an evening routine, and then a day at home routine. And then on the right side of this page, we're going to do a notes page for him. This is a brain dump area, something where he can just write down whatever he needs to during the month at that point in time. So we leave it pretty open and wide. And as you can see, I have gone through the same steps that I did on the pages previously, making sure that everything was outlined first before coming in with the color. I've also been following the same coloring format. So I always start with the orange because it's the most bold color of the bunch. Then I go in with the brown because it is our accent color that's giving us that contrast. Then I come in with that lighter colored orange that you can barely see on the page and then again finishing off with that gold to keep it as minimal as possible. Now here is my least favorite part of this setup. I use the 1.0 Pigma Micron to write these headers and the tip's getting a little fuzzy for me and it just came out a little thick and I didn't particularly like the way that it looked. But I also put in these hour increments. So each dog grid space is 15 minutes for Kenny to figure out what he wants to put in those particular rhythms or routines. Like the other pages, I have left the gold accents till last, but we are going to go ahead and put some of those in now. I'm putting a little more dots around than I did before, and I'm also going to use it to do a dot frame around this notes area. So on every single dot, I'm going to make a little dot on top of it just to frame out our page and give it a little bit of structure. Now I also decided that this page needed just a little bit more of that light orange color in order to balance one side with the other. So I colored in a couple of those tiny mushrooms and we are ready to move on to Kenny's weeklies. I am going back to the weekly structure that Kenny had before August. I had kind of skipped a month with this structure and he asked to have it back. So we are gonna go ahead and do this. If you've been around for a little bit, you guys have seen me set up this structure with a rolling weekly and have two weeks on one spread many a time. So instead, I'm gonna tell you a little story about our fantastical fungi world. In the realm of Fantastica, where magic flowed like rivers and dreams took flight on the wings of imagination, there existed a mystical phenomenon known as the Whispering Woods. These woods were unlike any other, for they were not simply a collection of trees and shrubs, but a living tapestry woven by the magic of mushrooms. At the heart of the Whispering Woods lay a massive ancient mushroom called Keldrith, its cap stretched high into the sky, its gills shimmering with a soft luminescence that bathed the surroundings in ethereal glow. Keldrith was the guardian of a secret that the people of Fantastica had only begun to fathom, a secret that explained how worlds were created. Long ago, when the world was still young, the first mushrooms sprouted from the fertile soil of Fantastica. They were no ordinary mushrooms, for they had been born from the very essence of magic itself. These mushrooms possessed a unique ability to channel the raw magic of the world and shape it into realms of wonder. One day, a young and curious mage named Illyria ventured into the Whispering Woods. She had heard tales of the mushroom's enchanting power and wished to witness it for herself. As she walked deeper into the woods, the air grew thicker with magic, and the gentle hum of the mushroom's energy surrounded her. Keldris' voice echoed in her mind, a melodious blend of wisdom and mystery. Welcome, young one, it whispered. You seek the secret of creation, do you not? Illyria nodded, her heart racing with anticipation. Yes, great Keldrith, I wish to understand how mushrooms can shape worlds. Keldrith chuckled softly, the sound like wind rustling through leaves. To grasp this secret, you must first learn to commune with the mushrooms, it said. Place your hand upon my cap and open your heart to their song. 
Illyria did as she was instructed, placing her hand on Keldris' cap. Instantly, a flood of sensations washed over her, a symphony of emotions, memories, and desires. She felt the pulse of the Earth's heartbeat, the ebb and flow of life energy that connected all living things. As Illyria delved deeper into the mushroom's song, she began to see visions, worlds unfurling like delicate petals, each one unique and brimming with its own magic. She saw realms of towering mountains where dragons soared, cities of gleaming crystals inhabited by creatures of light, and underwater gardens where merfolk danced among colorful coral. These worlds, Keldra's voice, resonated in her mind, are born from the dreams and wishes of beings across Fantastica. The mushrooms gather these energies, channel them through their mycelium network, and weave them into existence. Over time, Illyria became a guardian of the Whispering Woods, learning the art of mushroom magic and helping to shape new worlds. She discovered that each mushroom possessed a specific magic, a gift that it bestowed upon the world it created. Some mushrooms brought forth lush forests, others conjured boundless oceans, and still others forged realms of eternal night where stars danced in the velvet sky. And so the Whispering Woods continued to thrive, a place where dreams became reality and imagination flourished. Keldris' wisdom was shared with those who ventured there, and the knowledge of mushroom magic spread through Fantastica, inspired mages and dreamers alike to explore the boundless possibilities that lay within their own minds. And thus, the legacy of the mushrooms endured weaving tales of wonder and magic across the tapestry of Fantastica's ever-expanding cosmos. As I put the finishing touches on Kenny's second pair of weeklies, I hope you enjoyed the little story of Fantastica built off of that phrase at the beginning of the journal, mushrooms make worlds or fungi make worlds. I thought it would be just a little something extra that we could put into one of these videos. And that is it for the weekly setups for September. And we are ready to move on to the final spread in Kenny's September setup, which is going to be a playlist and a reflection. And just like our other spreads, I am going to start off by getting as much of the line work down on the page as possible. For this spread, I put both of the headers at the top and then I've left myself a big space in the middle to do some artwork. So we'll have the playlist to the left of that artwork and the reflections to the right of that artwork. I never thought I would do a mushroom theme because so many people do enjoy doing them in the fall. But when Kenny asked for that, I thought, well, let's just go ahead and do that. But I didn't want mine to be hyper realistic either. I didn't want to get out the paints and I didn't want to worry about too much shading and shadow. I just wanted to have a fun doodly mushroom theme with some fantastical elements and a little bit of a tail to go along with it. For all of the mushroom artwork, I really just combined different Google searches and I'd find this mushroom that I liked and so I'd sketch out a version of it and then I'd find another mushroom I liked and I'd add it to that page to make it look like it was originally one photo. Most of the illustrations I found had a vertical or portrait orientation like this one here. So on the previous pages where I needed to do a long line of mushrooms, that is definitely a whole lot of different mushroom illustrations combined together to get to that shape. This may also be the only illustration where I combined this lighter color with one of the darker colors. So I have the darker cap on that mushroom and then the lighter color coming down its stem. Now one of the things I don't trust myself to draw by hand is triangles or play buttons in this case. So for Kenny's playlist I did bust out the stencil so that I could get some equal and uniform triangles. I do like to give him a few prompts of reflection that he can think on for the end of the month. And then it's time to start adding in all of those elements that make this mushroom scene a little more fantastical. So we are adding in the circles. I did decide I needed a little bit more contrast with some more of our leafy branches coming here and there off of the bottom. And then it will also go ahead and add in some sparkles and dots here and there to just fill it out and make it a little more interesting. And of course, I cannot leave out the final touch of those gold accents. They just give us a little bit more magic. 
And there you have it. There is Kenny's September setup with the final playlist and reflection pages. Let's go ahead and flip back to the beginning and do a quick flip through. I want to thank you for coming along with us and learning a little bit about Fantastica and how fungi make worlds. You may not have a magical mystical mushroom named Keldrith to guide your path, but maybe you do have a whispering woods where you can wander and learn a little bit more about mushroom magic. Fun fact, when it comes to the edible variety of mushrooms, neither Kenny nor I are a fan. It's just one of those things we don't eat. But now that September is almost here or here, if you're watching this a little bit later, leave me a sparkle or mushroom emoji down in the comments below and let me know what is your favorite part of fall. That is it for me and this custom bullet journal setup for my son, Kenny. I appreciate you being here. You know what to do. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next one.